This is a HeadGum Podcast. Jonathan Raylock, James the Third, Drum Milligan. What more can I say? No way. Black men can jump. Yes. Welcome to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. Hollywood City. Uh, I'm Jonathan Braylock. Drop James. Wait, James. I'm James the Third. You didn't do that. You didn't do that. Nah, no, nah, because it's really inappropriate for this movie. You didn't do anything. Yeah, okay. it's always it. James. Can I tell you something right now? What's that? It's always inappropriate. I don't think it. It's always inappropriate. Yeah, you could have replaced James. it with Shoops. Oh yeah, but we just sang it. I'm Drop Milligan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have a special guest oh, wait. today. Oh, wait. oh, okay. So he likes to do this thing. Wait for this. It's special. Oh goodness! It's not <laughs> super special. Okay. What are you doing with your hands? Well, in my, in my Is mind, that a new thing? What, what, in, my, in my mind, my cheeks are. Fluff Can I just with say, air? like, I just want to, I just want to go through this experience. Somebody goes, "Hold on for this. This is special." And then does what you do. That's like every time a man had sex in this film. <laughs> oh, you take that back. You take that back. Yes, now, honestly. Ready yes. for it. You ready for it? Are you, Are you ready? First off, we go right into something that nobody wanted. But <laughs> like, well, we off, didn't want this. That was a great joke. <laughs> I'm slightly offended. And you know what? That was special. Shashir Zameda is here, everyone. Hi. Good drum roll. That, that, that was a drum roll. That was a good one. Uh, I gotta get better at that. Yeah. Yes, you do. You okay. really do. You really do. Okay. Me and John never sit this close. I feel so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's right a little now. weird. Uh, okay, we are reviewing the film "Waiting to Exhale." Woo! Mm-hmm. Uh, 1995. Yep. Uh, Forrest Whitaker's Forrest first Whitaker directorial first, debut. but then of several, right? Like of like he's like. Matt, he's like directing all the time now. Yeah, yeah, he produces yeah. a lot now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and uh, starring four beautiful black women. Yeah, four. for talents, oh, we yeah. got Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Uh-oh. This is their second film. Mm-hmm. Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett, a mm-hmm. legend. Uh huh. Loretta Devine. Loretta Devine. Loretta Devine, also Loretta a legend. Devine. Just constantly, just still killing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Leela Rashawn. Lila Rashawn, yep. which I think she was like somewhat of a newcomer. She was. She was new in this movie. Uh, when this movie premiered, she. Uh, I mean, amazing. She well, wait, but she was also in. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Because she was always someone who I confused for. Um, Robin Givens. Robin Givens. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, but she was also in Boomerang. She was in Boomerang, and she was in The Meteor Man. And she's oh, a yeah. meteor. She's a meteor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, what, what, like bigger, was smaller roles or yeah, smaller, smaller roles? Smaller yeah, roles, like she yeah. wasn't Robin Givens. <laughs> like right, right, right. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, Robin maybe Gibbons. that was the issue. Maybe yeah. they're yeah. like, we already have. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, we have Robin, Robin Givens. Givens. Like we know why. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, but today there are five famous Chris <laughs> white men. Yeah, and Chris in movies, Chris. and they're like, yeah, yeah but we can. But we only one? need one. <laughs> yeah, are you we're looking Chris. for more Chris. Oh, we're actually looking for some more. <laughs> um, this movie made it was like a sixteen million dollar budget. Sixteen made million, okay. Eighty-one million made over eighty-one million. Yes, worldwide. Uh, wow. worldwide. Black mm-hmm. films Black making films money. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. yes. Uh, now of- I did look up. It's uh, Rotten Tomato rating. It, it was not kindly reviewed by Chris. <laughs> because I'm sure a white man yeah. was reviewing it. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's like hat, like fifty something percent. Well, I mean, Wait, go ahead. This is based off a book, though, right? It's based off. Yeah. A book. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Is that does that have something to do with it? Like I no. haven't read the book, but. I don't no. think so. <laughs> I think. I, I think. Oh, you think like people were upset because it didn't portray the book in it? Right. Yeah. Like, like really? people who are no. like, uh, probably no, not. <laughs> no, no. It had more to do with, I guess, because it was for Forrest Whitaker's first film. Like yeah. there were just like some things that they felt like it was like a little bit melodramatic and like, right. I mean, yeah, well, also yeah. you're making a movie with uh, like an all 
female cast, which people complain about to this day. And right, this was yeah. four That's black true. women. Right, yeah. yeah. Come mm-hmm. on, man. Like you had two hey, to say two things against you. Then yeah. who are right. well I they mean, were they would say it in the way of like you're like, I mean it's great. It's so it's just great. not gonna sell. It's just not good. <laughs> but the rotten tomatoes yeah. it's like who's I don't believe in those. Exactly. Like, who... Because yeah, that's a conglomerate of critics. It is. So, like, who's going to see that that's like, I want to see a different movie when I'm watching that? You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, is there any... I, I, any other... I mean, the basic... The scope of the film is simply... Uh, the, the All four women are, like, doing well. They're all kind of... Well... Angela Bassett's character starts married, but immediately is entering a divorce. And so they're all kind of single now Mm -hmm. and dealing with Mm -hmm. different, you know, problems with men. They just wait in the exam. Actually, actually, Whitney Houston says that in the movie. Yeah. I waited. And, and I exhaled. exhaled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got it. It's like really early on, too. Like, yeah. usually that line comes, comes so late. Yeah. So late. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was like no. the third line. Very early. She, she needed, she was waiting. But also, this is Terry McMillan, right? Yes. Terry yeah. McMillan. What was that? Uh, How Stella Got a Groove Back? Stella yeah. Got a Groove yep. Back. Yep. And then something, a new thing that just came, new book that just came out. Oh, right? really? Yeah. Um, she was on like Daily Show. Oh, oh, I know what it is because. <laughs> Mom, this is a shout out to my mom right now. Because Terry hey, McMillan, uh, Stella Got a Group Back was, of course, about her and how she met a young black dude. The young dude that I guess she, to change her life, either cheated on her. Yes. Like, oh. like cheated on her. So then so now it's a new book. About that. About, about that. that. Oh, wow. Like, what happens oh, no. after, like, the new thing. Yeah, I remember oh, no. um, years ago, they were both on Oprah, Terry and her man, mm. or ex-man, and Oprah was like, well, how do you feel <laughs> about ruining this woman's life? And he's just like, yeah, whoops. And everyone's oh. like so mad at him. But it was pretty great that they were all there. That he was like, yeah, I, I realize I fucked up. And I guess I'll just come on Oprah and just let, yeah, these, go on let Oprah these women like, yell at me. That's so weird. That's like, like Oprah doing like a Maury episode. Or yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. Because I'm. I, I remember, uh, not to talk about uh, Stella Got a Groove Back, but I remember that being such a big deal. Yeah. Because she was Terry McMillan, and the guy was on Oprah to promote the book along with Angela Bassett, and it was like, oh man, this new movie! It's the second one because it came out after. Yeah, it came out after after this. this. So it was a big deal. And yeah. the fact that they went back on, like you fucked up, dude. <laughs> oh, man. oh wow, that's so. Sad. He probably went on because he was like, you look. There's a movie like about me, but like people don't know the other side. Yeah, <laughs> like people don't know my side. I was of the young. Story. Yeah, and she got me from Jamaica. I was literally cleaning. Boards. <laughs> when you first see him in a movie, he's just scrubbing. <laughs> like, what is this dude doing? Just shirtless scrubbing stuff. Um, cool. So, we like to do initial thoughts, just like how you f- felt about the movie when you first saw it. And I guess maybe you can, sometimes you can talk about either like uh, when you saw it the first time and then rewatching it kind of now in the context of whatever, 20 years later. Yeah. How did you, how did you feel when you first? I'd actually love to hear what you guys. Okay, yeah, we'll go first. Uh, first. Okay. So, first. so for me, because like I just saw, I I hadn't seen this movie before. This is my first time watching it. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's I was somewhat because you were tweeting about it. I was dropped. tweeting as I watched it, which I never do. I never. Oh, do you that. live tweeted it? Because I never. It was. Yeah. Oh, I have to look at this. <laughs> and so I was already somewhat affected, and then I was also watching it with my girlfriend, so that was also affecting me. But I know I liked it. I I um uh. I really, really enjoyed that we can live in like four different black women's lives and not have to deal so much about like race in a way that was like race was brought up, but like not in a way that was heavy handed and also not have to deal with like struggling, like, you know, like single moms who are like struggling to feed their kid or, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like that. So it was just, a, um, I feel like characters that we rarely ever get to see and it was so refreshing, you know, it was so nice that they were all career women and, but like, it wasn't a thing. Like Mm -hmm. we weren't like harping on it. Like it was a thing. Um, and like, yeah, I really follow their stories. I mean, there were parts of me that were like, like, "Ah, why are you doing that? Like, but I felt like (laughs) I was one of, you know what I mean? Cause they did that to each other too. They were like, "Mm." like the, there was that scene between Loretta and, um, I guess Gus Leela. No, well, stop no, it. Goodness. Honestly, 
You have to stop. <laughs> yeah. stop he always calls. We've well, actually reviewed a, somehow a lot of a lot Juan of Carlo. Well, no, because he's in works. everything. That's he's in why. everything. We reviewed a lot of Juan Carlos Esposito like films that he's been in. He always calls him Gus. The man's That's, name is Gus. No, that is literally not That's his name. <laughs> one character we've clearly de- defined that he's in. A he's lot in of multiple movies. movies. Okay. with a lot of great characters. The man named Gus. I'm gonna call him Gus. No, but Loretta and uh, Le- Lila is the other actress, isn't it? Yeah. Um, when she was like. I don't know, girl. Oh, wait, no. Maybe it wasn't Lila. It was Angela. It was oh. Angela Bassett. And she was like, you know, but you know you're wrong. Oh. You know? Yep. Yeah. There was like that one moment. They were like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, and then kind of just sat there. Yep, you're and right. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah. But she said she needed it for her. She's like, yeah, I had to do this I just for me. needed it. She's like, I'm different than you, you know? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, but she, okay. I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I and that was it. it. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was right. such it. Um, that's what friends do. Yeah, yeah, that's what friends do. Um, I like that. Only really one of them entered a relationship at the end of the movie mm-hmm. uh, because, like, I at the same time I don't want I don't want like I, I understand like the power of okay I don't need to be in a relationship and then at the same time there's like a part of me that's like but relationships are nice you know what I mean <laughs> if you find the right one like and so I like that at least one of them and Gregory Hines is super cool you know what I mean. He was great. Mm-hmm. He didn't dance though. Yeah, I like that there was one. There was at least one good black man in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what I mean. But at the same but time, I was like, I was totally really, cool. I mean, right? There's, there's only, only one, one baby, good Jonathan Braylock. And then so the real. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no, but yeah. Anyway, I've been talking a lot about it. I mean, I, I, I really like it. I. It, again, like I said, this was a movie I couldn't watch growing up. So, like, my family's, like, all women. Like, mm-hmm. matter of fact, we just have two more baby girls that came this week. Um, so, it's all women. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and so, it was weird because I felt so removed from this movie. One, because of the time period. And two, because I felt <laughs> the weight of black men for some reason. It was it was a weird... But wait, but was you weren't allowed to see it because, growing because up. Of, but because was, I was young. Was this your first time seeing it? I, I had seen pieces of it, but this was okay. the first time watching it. And so, like, I never, like, live tweet. But watching this movie, I just, man, <laughs> there was a phrase growing up, which probably people still say, but, like, I remember, like, black women in my neighborhood being like, man, niggas ain't shit. I remember them saying that. And watching this movie, I was like, Because niggas ain't shit. Yo, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I felt it. Watching this movie, I was like, man, every dude, even Gregory Hines to an extent, like, yeah, at the end, he's nicer and you realize, like, he cares, but he ain't that nice when he first meets her you know like, what are you talking about because this is my thing because like I guess his whole I guess for him to be like that last monologue of like oh yeah I want to take your son like I like you blah blah those innocents when he was at her house he didn't seem super warm to her to me he seemed very like matter of fact and it was a thing if I couldn't tell at one point did he actually like her or was he like putting his guard up and I guess he breaks it down why he does it but I didn't feel very warm when I saw him I didn't feel very warm when I saw any black man in this movie, to be I mean, honest. Yeah. Like the Leon, man was a widow. <laughs> like, Leon was in it. it. You know what it was? I felt, I felt like <laughs> black men should just be better, which is probably true. Well, but yeah, I mean, but, like, but the thing is, is I, feel like, yeah. I feel like some of the same stuff in this movie, now that I'm an adult, and I guess closer to the age that they are supposed to be in this movie, some of my female friends now still say the same thing about dudes. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, is, are we still... Not shit, you know. And I started thinking about every nah. relationship I ever had. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and like, no. Everything I ever did. It's, it's, but yeah, it's like I just no. felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I was like, does this movie pass um, the Bechdel test? Is that what it's called? It is not. Te- it does not pass the Bechdel test. It does. But, like, right? but wait, but, but wait, hold on, what? Because they Cause every my, time my understanding of the Bechdel test mm-hmm. is that uh, uh, it relates to a a um, male lead character. But since See, this I didn't movie know that. Since this movie doesn't have a, but that's my understanding of it, though. I, I don't. I mean, I. It's, I think it's just, it's just if the focus about, is a man, yeah, yeah that yeah. does take away from them so focusing the on their itself. relationship. I thought it was, yeah, it's like I thought it was if the it, they had to talk about it was two women talking to each other that moved the plot of the story along. That was right. just about. The male, yeah, but but it's hard this because movie's... this movie is. I mean, the plot is driven around men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But there is well, but it's like almost no reason I even bring no, it up. No, I mean it is because it's about relationships, yeah. which is a thing, right? And, and but what about like conversations where they had about? Because even when job. it was Angela Bassett and about the job, the job was about 
And yeah, man, it's tricky. I, I don't know. It was I, don't know. I, I actually thought. don't know what the Bechdel test is. Clearly, oh, so I thought it, I did. Yeah, obviously, it's like, I can Google it. I mean, there's yeah, it was like three things. There was like two women having a conversation other than a man. Yeah, with no with no men present. With, right? Yeah, with no and, men present and not, not about, a, about a man. Yeah, and there's like two other things that. Um, are in the test. That's the main one. That's the main one. one. Just and it's just that they just don't do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. They yeah. have to. Are we saying that literally every conversation? Yes, is I've watched this a lot, and I truly cannot find a conversation where they're just talking about life even, yeah. or like <laughs> their kids or anything. It's really about like, what are you going to do with this man? Yeah. You just left this man. This man just did this thing to and you. And then even their kids, it's like Donald Faison, like. Yeah, you know he, what I mean? he like, represents like, a man, like a, a man, grown, like, a grown adult man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, that was the question I had, but huh. I liked the movie. I just felt really bad while watching it. Yeah. So that was how I felt. No, I, um, I, I liked seeing it again. I had, I had like three, mem- three clear memories of it, uh, watching it when I was younger, and they were. Um, so, so in this order, uh, and then it ended up being in this order in the movie. So I didn't even realize that I remembered it in the order that I remembered it. But it was uh, first the moment when when Whitney Houston like is like, oh, and then finally you exhale, and she like hugs me, and then and she, <sighs> yeah, and she's so passionate, and then she just like breathes out deep, like a literal a, exhale. A strong in case you moment. didn't know what that is, <laughs> yes, there it is. This we is see it. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and then the other one is is uh, you know is when Angela Bassett is like I'm burning all this stuff. Yes, like, oh, uh, such a good so one. So sad. Like, uh, and then the other one is the part when they're like at the club and she's like and they're like man she's like crazy and then she like shows up and she's like bald you know she like cut all her hair and she's like man uh, uh, so those are the strong memories. <laughs> That's out of it. Man, you know she's like. Man, I'm not. Uh, those are the strong memories that resonated for me. There, but there's a that's the scene. What. <laughs> What? Wait. What? Wait. When they're talking about her hair. Yeah, yeah. They're not talking about a man. Oh, no. No, 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 they're at the club and it's the dude that they should be dating or like no, but that's the next scene. I'm talking about the scene where she actually cuts her hair. Cause she's like, I don't want to cut nope. my hair. She said, you shouldn't be cutting your hair because it's a man. Yeah, because yeah, it's if you cut your hair, then you aren't attracted. Because well, she, she's doing it for a, a man. Well, she's doing it for a man. But then it was that it was. Well, she's saying you're doing it in response to your divorce. You should, which wait. involves a man. That's yeah. not. I mean, still about yes. a dude. It's still about a dude. That's but very. No, no. That's nice <laughs> of you trying I, to. <laughs> it's nice that you want this movie to be super feminist, but it's past the Bechdel test. It can't. It does not. Is, you can try all you How want. How do you have a two-hour movie with four female leads and not one so they do not talk about a man? That's insane. Uh, I mean, listen. That is insane. People at home, if you're watching called, the movie, no, let us know. No, because the movie is the called The movie is two hours. No, no, wait. But the movie all is leads, called... every lead is a woman. There's not one lead that's not a woman. the movie is called Waiting to Exhale and the specific, the exhalation is about like when you can finally Which I get. not be worried about so, like who but I'm you with. So no one movies where like there are men and and it's about romance. Are there scenes where the two men are talking to each other of something that's not? Well, if it seems definitely right, yeah, yeah, they'll talk talk about food. That it's called waiting to exhale. No, this movie is called waiting to exhale. The The purpose of it. (laughs) I understand that. I'm saying how even in a romantic film, how do you not once be like, let's not talk about a man. How you doing? Just, how, how was that? Doing today? Did you did you see that movie last? Night? I mean, <laughs> but this also came out. Men? This also came out in the nineties when 95. people weren't really thinking about well, the yeah. Bechdel test. Well, and, yeah. The Bechdel test was before. Bechdel test oh, wasn't. But not everyone was paying attention to it. It's not like it was like <laughs> right, popular. Yeah. Yeah, of course, it was like, invented earlier than that. But not everyone was like trying to implement that. People yeah. still aren't trying to implement that. Nope. I, yeah, I feel like Ghostbusters was the first yeah. one. You just had people just chilling. No, but then, but then, as I was watching it, uh, just like more and more things came back, which I wasn't expecting because I'd only seen it once before. Uh, but like the sex, the disconnect of the sex was a strong thing. I was a big down face on fan when I was a, yeah, yeah, when I was um, a, a huge yeah. fan of him. So like every time I was on screen, I was like, oh, I guess I remembered all of this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, good. You know, the movie's good. She said, yeah. I watched this movie many times and. It's like the it's like the lemonade of movies. It's for black women. This was yeah. for me. <laughs> and 
And I've also tried to get other friends to watch it who are not black women. And they're always just like, this, this is clearly not, I'm not the demographic for this movie. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything really black in it? That, like, that they- no, but like just the themes, I think, really resonate with black women. Yeah, for sure. And like I've watched it multiple times in my life at different ages. Like when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was in college, as, an, as a young adult who started dating, as an older adult who has more of an idea of relationships and every time I learn something new or I'm like, Oh, now that's an emotion I can understand. Or like, now I understand why this happened or I just have a totally new insight on it as I grow older. And I'm sure I will continue to as more things happen to me. But yeah, it's, it's a movie that I like. I like it as a movie, but I also just like it because it really, I feel so connected to the characters and the stuff that's going on. And, and I feel like I know those women, like, those women are in my family. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> like I, I've sure. been around these women for a very long time. It just, yeah, it feels good whenever I watch it. So do you feel that the, the um, connection that they have as black women are, is different than like four white women could have? Like, is it, is it that, that that's why maybe like a white woman wouldn't really like, though I will say I think white women did see this film. Like, because yeah. it had well, to, guess, right? Well, my thing is, to I, I guess I don't get the difference between, and I'm not comparing two, but it's like, this movie had four women. You look at Sex and City, it's just four white women. It's just four women. Like, to, no, 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 it's not the same. It's, the difference is because, well, they don't like explicitly address this in the movie, but right. the way women, like black women, navigate the world is way different than right. when white yeah. women navigate the world. So the way they're, like, their relationships. Even like when they're talking about uh, like this white woman stole my man, mm-hmm. that is right. very yeah. different yes. that's, than that's, yeah. a white woman saying some white woman stole my man. Because that's like okay, another woman took my man. Right. This yeah. is like I am being my whole being is being put down because yeah. not just because I'm a woman, but because I'm a black woman, and right. because like we are already devalued by this country, and now my man thinks he's better than my culture and is like mm-hmm. looking for something else outside of what we already have yeah. going on. So it's like multiple levels of hurt than yeah. just my man left me. Totally. Right. And then yeah. also in like, in like Saxon city, I mean, I haven't seen much to, to make this claim, but they don't have, there aren't moments when it's like, Oh, he's dating her and she's black. Right. Whereas, totally. like, oh, yeah. whereas like, because of, because of all of the ways that, you know, race a lot of affects people, yeah. right? Like, like they're gonna bring up, like, oh, it's this white woman, you know? Totally. Well, okay, mm-hmm. let's go through the film. It starts off. Do we? Is the first scene? Well, I mean, it's, it goes to all of them. Could, yeah, but is Whitney the first one talking? I think, I think so. Whitney's doing the voiceover. Yeah. Right? I think she's the first one. Yeah. So, oh yeah, the, just cinematically, like they have a lot of these moments where I actually kind of liked it, where like the inner monologue of the woman is happening while we're like seeing them navigate the world. So yeah. like Whitney's going to this like New Year's Eve party and in her mind she's like like I can take either one of these <laughs> women's men. Uh-huh. She says she's going to. She's like, yeah, you're right. She sits down. She's like, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Don't you blink because I will take your man. Yeah, like, she, she, she says it. <laughs> she says it. She's like, you know, um, I like, I, I would never do that. But <laughs> right. I do have moments where I'm like, if I feel good and I'm like feeling myself and I'm like yeah I could take any of these I could take you I could do it well, that's I want. so interesting I don't know if I've ever thought that I've ever <laughs> had yeah, that no, thought of like no I can way. take this man's woman <laughs> man, sometimes, you, sometimes you just feel good sometimes you just feel good Come on. Like no you know you know Gerard that feeling when like you know, I have a hair done where I feel a haircut. good where I feel like oh but I've never had the specific feeling of yeah, like, like of like of like a man being with a woman and being like, "Yo, you better watch out, son! Like, <laughs> I can snatch your woman if I wanted to." I've, I've actually had that thought, like especially in college, because where I went to school, all the black people were <laughs> football players. I mean, football and like basketball players, and they used to be so douchey. Oh, so right. like they were so douchey and so like whatever. So anytime I saw them, and it's not because they were, it should have been because they were being rude, but I would see them like not treat this pretty woman right, yeah. and I'd be like, "Oh, I'm a." I remember my head like, oh, well, I'm yeah. gonna swoop I'm in. Gonna t- I'm gonna well, take her. And it's just a little different than no, just like you're just at a party and you're like, okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know it's not any play. of you, but <laughs> <laughs> I will take you. I, I can't fight I nobody. <laughs> uh, and then, like, we have Angela Bassett's character, you know, she's like kind of, you know, getting ready for this party. And 
in her inner monologues, like, I hate these stupid parties. They're so boring, blah, blah, blah. And then... I think she says it out loud, just like straight up. Right? Oh, no, she said it out loud. And then, yeah, and then he comes in and he's he like, comes in. He's like, by the way, you're not going to the party. Yeah, well, that's so funny because, excited. yeah, yeah. Like, first I think it was her inner monologue because she said that and then he was like, do you mind if we don't go, do you mind if you don't come to this party? Or something like if that. If we don't go. He said we, didn't he? He said if we don't go. He said we don't go to this. Yeah, I think he did because, say because, we because, because she got to, excited. Because the two yeah, of them aren't going, him and someone else. Yeah, he's like, if we don't go. And she was like, oh, yeah, well, like, what are we going to do? And he's like, actually, you're not going. I'm bringing uh, somebody else. Oh god! Which is like the, w- the are worst. You yeah. me? Uh, that's the worst like way to bring like, up. There's no somebody. good way to br- to bring this up. But and that's a like, bad this way. This is the <laughs> worst New Year's way to yeah. bring this up. On New, New Year's Eve, and she's all right. dressed up. She's ready to go. <laughs> she was. Like, you couldn't tell her hours before. Before she took a shower. Yeah, <laughs> before she changed her clothes. That's the worst. He was all ready to go. Yeah, especially since he's ready to walk the door to go with somebody else. He like he knew this was a last minute decision. Yeah, he was what a punk. And he had the white girl. Too. Oh man, he had the white girl waiting in the wings, man. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "Oh, is uh, it that stupid white woman?" And then, and then he was like, "Thanks for making this so easy." I was like, "Oh, uh, f you, dude." Yeah. <laughs> he already had his mind made up. He just wanted to like did. turn the knife even more. Yeah, wow, terrible. So so awful. He leaves her. Who's uh, Loretta Devine's? Uh, Loretta Devine. We see. What is the first thing we is she see? Wait, her? I remember. No, oh, I think it's with her, her son. Because he's, 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 he's getting ready to go to a New Year's party, but yeah. she's staying at home. He's getting ready to go to a New Year's party. Um, she's like, don't stay out too late. He's like, Mom, it's New Year's. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, it's yeah. like he's going to be literally out. literally starts at midnight. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and then she was like, well, your father's going to be here, so, you know, you should come and see him. And he was like, no, he's never been here for me. You know, maybe you're happy about it. And she kind of gets sad. And, no, he says like something to he the said, effect. He said, "Where of, she stay?" He said, "Where did he stay last time he was here?" Where did he stay? None of your business. Here. That's so heartbreaking. That's hard. And it, it, again, it's it's one of those moments where you feel you're like oh, that was mean, and then also I feel bad for this son who's like, "Yeah, man, like he's 17 years old. His father was never there, and she's like, still and his mom clearly is still in love with a man that like doesn't care about her." Yeah. And so, how hard is that for him to be yeah. like, "Mom?" Like stop wow. it! Stop doing this to yourself. Um, you know, so that was like, whew. and then he apologizes, and then he goes, and then and uh, what's her name again? Um, Lila, 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 Lila Rashan. What was her first scene? What was she, her? First no, scene? she. It was like. Well, oh, she was about to it was with Wendell Pierce, right? Oh, oh yes, yes, from from, her, from work. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So, oh yeah, that was again one of the great inner monologue moments, right? Where he's like, she's like, he's fine, he's nice. I'll try to make it work. Yeah. But then you don't see him yet, and he comes out dancing. Oh, yeah, God. and she's like, uh, he's so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> like, he's so crushing bad. this like, like. <laughs> Very like nerdy, like oh, goofy yeah. guy character. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's great, and uh, and they and that scene kind of plays out where we we see like <laughs> you see he's like doing this dance. He tries to pick her up. Oh, he does, but it's like, he drops her. Like, <laughs> wait, so wait, but oh, here's God. the thing. Oh, this the other thing too is. And is it the whole movie that there's like no foreplay at all? Because wait, I have a comment about no. this scene in particular. They get no. a condom out in this scene, though. No. Right? Yeah. Because literally, I was like, this is one of the first movies where like a sex scene. She's like, uh, uh-uh, aren't you missing something? Mm-hmm. And grabs that condom. Let's talk about sex, baby. baby. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. <laughs> Right. I like when people get that like ow. <laughs> yeah, that was the only time somebody puts a condom on in this movie. No, but I mean, think about movies now. Like they, you, they just go straight to it. They just totally. do it, and I'm like, totally. hey man, you it's just, cool. That no, thing. it's like a little too. They go straight to it. Like it's literally like you're not in the bed, and then pounding. Yeah, like man, you ain't got no condom. You just <laughs> yeah. They Bruh. established that, and then they never came back to it. But I do like at least in that scene though. Um. So the scene is like, yes, he, he's not good at sex. Like he's terrible at it. It is true that a lot of men aren't good at foreplay in this movie. But I, yeah. I, I, I said not everyone because yeah, I think certain ones were, and that's 
And That's we didn't see that? part of why... No, I think it was like, for instance, I think like she really liked Russell, who was played right. by Leon. Right, 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 he right. was good at foreplay. But he's a bad yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a bad man. But that's like one of the reasons she was kind of caught up in him. And that and the mm-hmm. same with uh, Whitney Houston's character with the... Oh, I with the Allstate guy? Yeah, with Dennis Allstate Haysburg. Guy. Wait, what's the yeah, yes. Dennis Haysburg? Dennis yes. Haysburg. Or the president from 24. Yes, president okay, from 24. Dennis Haysburg. Dennis Haysburg. Sorry, what is his actual name? Is, I think but. he was also good at foreplay, too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the first couple men that we see are terrible. Are terrible. They could just go. Yeah, right he into literally it. just goes right into it. And but then, then doesn't is like is this the scene where she's listing her dreams? She's mm-hmm. like, I want a house. I want yeah. kids. I want, and he's like, I can give you that. And then he goes yeah. slower. And, and then she's like, Wait, yeah. He's like, Well, you can start by kissing me. And it's like, Oh, that's probably went a lot better. Yeah, well, but that's the Hi. thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I. Okay, I say my personal. All right, here experience. we go. Oh, okay. here it is. But so everyone is going to be so it hard is, to get through. It, it's going to be so hard. But the thing is, like, I. The fact that she gave him instructions and then she's like, I think she says like that wasn't that bad. I feel like, look, man, teach me. You know, yeah, like everybody I, well, has their own quirks, totally. their own thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like my pride ain't big enough to I, say. I, yeah, I, everybody's I different. Work. Everyone's their own delicate yeah, flower. Yeah, especially Everyone's if it's the first time teach. you guys have done exactly. anything together. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I like yes. the fact that she like in that scene like she was so like not against him, but like she was like, ah, why am I doing this? But then. He became kinder, and you're like, oh, now I see. I thought they were going to be together throughout the whole movie, honestly. Leon is um, my favorite actor. Who? Leon? Leon. He has a new TV show coming out on Fox. Okay, well, I'm going to tune in. But I will say this (laughs) one thing. Just just, this is kind of like a public service announcement to men. What? Uh, No. (laughs) No, do it, Bray. Do it, Bray. Do it, Bray. Calm down. All right, tell him, Bray. Calm down. Tell Stop me. getting so excited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First of all, let's just be real with it. You've you been watching say? too much porn. True. Very true. You're watching hey, yeah, too hey, much porn. You know, for real? True. You're watching too much you're porn. You're watching too much porn. porn. If this you are listening like, to this right now. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, no. True. <laughs> Calm it down. True. Nobody likes that. True. <laughs> Foreplay is essential. It is, is essential. Essential. Ask yes. the direction. And man. also, I'm you know what? Foreplay is great. I don't know why you wouldn't want to do foreplay. It's about it's about you sharing something with your partner. You know what I mean? And like you provide. Can you open your eyes. Don't look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't look at me in my eyes. <laughs> you, James Third had his eyes super close. And never be dead in my eyes. You got to pleasure your partner. That is. Oh, all right, bro. All right, go ahead. Sorry. That is ahead. not what happened. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't interrupt. No, I didn't get it. At this point, they no, they get it. All right. Are you sure, James? I thought I messed it up. I hope right, they get right. it. Uh, at, this, at this point, I hope they all get right, it. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> you didn't look at me in my eyes. Yeah. Though. And then, yeah, with that specific thing, it was like, they had that nice moment, and then, like, the next scene was just like, I guess she was the she was his boss, and she's going through this meeting, and then he was like, he br- brings up something, was like, wait, but what about this? And he... She's like, how dare he? Yeah. <laughs> right, which felt... I, I couldn't... At, t- at first, I was like, wait, who's who's in the wrong here? Like, I couldn't really yeah. tell. But it seemed like she kind of just got she mad. She made a mistake. She made a mistake. She made a mistake, right? Up. She was just mad that he corrected her, even though he was just doing his job. Yeah. Which also just made me go, huh, this is why you can't have relationships with people you work with. I, I mean, don't know. It's like yeah, super hard. It gets complicated. Especially yeah. if you're not on the same level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh I did like that she was his boss, though. I did. It was just funny because, <laughs> but only thing is, her in a monologue at that point, I only remember it because I thought it was so funny. He corrected her, and then she went to go pick up a phone or something like that. And she was like, Guess you ain't going to see this pussy again. And I was like, Oh, this is that. Just dead. And the thing is, what the dude did was just like, I guess his job, and she was like, How dare he do his job or something You're like really, that. She really did say those lines. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Oh, I was like, Oh, man. <laughs> That's tough. He should agree with everything I said because he <laughs> was in my pussy. <laughs> That's really how that went but down. to be fair, I think, well, not, it wasn't really said in the movie, but I think one of the things, dynamics of that relationship is that she was like, he's lucky to have me, which mm-hmm. is a terrible yeah. relationship. to be. You shouldn't just be like, my partner is lucky to be. I mean, yeah, that's not the that's not a good yeah. beginning to any relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's meant for failure. Uh, but see, then, so, so the movie, every single character started off like with a man, with the man, mm-hmm. they kind of did. Yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. Well, except for Whitney, I feel. Like. No, she went to meet. She that was going to meet. Oh, she yeah, she started with a guy. She was yeah. Going yeah, meet that other. Yeah, the other guy that she and exhaled then, with very early on in the movie. Right. Yes, <laughs> Loretta watched her son walk out the door. Angela Bassett got a divorce. And her was coming, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Like yeah, everyone had a man that they were dealing with at the beginning of the movie, yeah. but at the end, 
It was just the four of them. And it was that's just the four of them. I love that. Like when they all spent New Year's together. Right. A year later. A year later. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was nice. Yeah. The so I don't know. Which should we just follow people's storylines throughout and then? Yeah, I mean, you can start with Whitney because I guess she came up first. Yeah. Yeah. Whitney's. Uh, yeah, the first man that she met just seemed like a guy that she was interested in. She almost said like. The, the the first scene that we see them with together, she's like, they're dancing, and that's when she does that waiting to exhale thing, and she mm-hmm. exhales. And then immediately when she does that, like, another woman comes over and is like, you haven't danced with me all night. And he's mm-hmm. like, oh. And then she, and when he's like, oh. <laughs> uh, this is my friend. Yeah, yeah. he's like, what? Uh. my friend. But even when she said, he was like, this is my friend, and the other one was like, mm-hmm. And yeah. I was like, I just called you his friend. Like, yeah, what? that sucks. You know, I, no, we know what's <laughs> interesting about this movie is that well, at least Whitney, um, Whitney, uh, Leela, and and um, Angela Bassett were cool dealing with other people's like men. Like, for instance, like yeah, Whitney's, yeah. Whitney's dude. Like, for instance, even for this sure. guy, she still hooks up with, even though he was there with someone else or something. Mm-hmm. Her big love is married. Angela does date the guy who I guess is dating someone who like they say you're wrong for, and Leela Rashawn. You know, she even admits like dating like a uh, uh, married man. And it's interesting that they all are cool with it because I feel like, and it doesn't villain doesn't make them seem like villains. Yeah, yeah. which is so interesting to me. Yeah, that like, is interesting. Yeah, because I mean, because Whitney says off break, and she may have been whatever. She's like, I will take your man. Like she said it in right. her mind and smirked about it, and then got up and left. So it's like, and they were never villains. They were because basically like, you got to get yours, sort of. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah. message of kind waiting of. to excel. Get yours, and I yeah. think it's also yeah. a way to ma- not make them like victims or like oh yeah, poor yeah. them. They're the other yeah. woman. They're like I'm choosing That's to do this. Point. I'm, I'm, yeah. I am actively doing this. I know what's going on. That's a That's a great point. point. They weren't all. They weren't all victims. They were but like, it made them realize characters with flaws as but well it, as. What, wait, did you just say they were they were actual characters? Yeah, they were fully realized. Wait, wait, wait so you had a movie with like, uh, black, <laughs> black women and they were like people? No, yeah. I don't. Oh, was a mate? Was no, somebody wait. a mate? Was somebody a mate in this movie? <laughs> I don't. I don't think I somebody was a mate. I don't think I once saw a mate in this film. Was someone? Did someone? No, but one of them sold drugs. Though. No, I don't think. I don't <laughs> no, think one of them sold drugs. None was of somebody, them sold drugs. Was somebody a prostitute? I, but like, but the no. movie didn't make a lot of money, right? They like, actually, no, it made no, a lot of money. Actually, yeah. James is the scene where they like. Someone banged the white dude in it, you know. Oh right, yeah. And then there's right, 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 the white dude. No, actually, either. no. That, there was wait, no okay, white wait, man wait. at all. Yeah. So wait. this movie made a lot of money. Uh-huh. They didn't have sex with a white dude. No one no, sold no. drugs. Mm-mm. No one sold drugs, and the four four women were the lead. Black women. Yeah, but they had there was a there was a there was a male lead, and I mean they yeah, were like, yeah, there was like a dude, like one. I mean there were men that came in and out, but actually none that none that stayed throughout. Stayed throughout. Y'all say this movie was successful? Yeah, it was actually really successful. Yeah, Mm -hmm. this was there was a black director too. Get 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 out of here! You shut up! Yeah, yeah, no. Who wrote the screenplay? Don't you tell me it was a black woman. It was a black woman. What? It started off as a novel. I quit because they're telling lies on this podcast. This is 1995, and we can't get this shit done today. I well, know. so LA Times called it a uh, a phenomenon. Because a how phenomenon though? It's a freak of nature. A freak of nature. Because <laughs> this is the time. I, just for the people at home, this is the time we <laughs> this had this is a movie real come thing. out. My little hair no, really upset me. That no, article. It, it's insane. But like this movie came out in 95. Very this frustrating. Is, this is when you had people on TV. This is when you had like girlfriends living single. Mm-hmm. Like you had you had. Black people on TV making mm-hmm. movies and they were people. And now, what you just described, which was how this movie is, mm-hmm. women with flaws, right? Right. People had kids. People had jobs. Like, one, like Whitney was like a, a television producer. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Whitney, that mm-hmm. one scene, she was basically like, you know, uh, this man is freaking poor. He's taking my money. He's using my toothbrush. But I gotta get mine, so whatever. I was like, "Damn, girl!" <laughs> <laughs> and how beautiful like, is I just want to. I just want to lay. I want a good lay. <laughs> yeah, I need to get fucked. So, and that's what that's. Why? Why can't we get this? Why can't we get this today? Yeah. When's the last time you seen four? When's the last time you seen one. two black women in a movie together, <laughs> just <One>. living life? <laughs> yeah, just one. one. Uh, last time, just two one, just yeah, living one. life, just living, just living life. Mm, no. It's, this I, is I 2016. Can't think Can of. we take a second? I'm trying. I'm, I'm thinking about Tyler Perry too there right now. Two. I know. I'm even trying to think of like. Give me two. Fruit, fruit, fruit films. 
Give me two. Well, wait, I but maybe it's Diary of a Mad. Maybe Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Wait, maybe. Who else is the lead, bro? What do you? Tyler Perry's the lead. All of those movies. Okay. Well, um, no. What's her name? No, is Diary mostly of a Mad Black Woman is Kimberly Elise. Yeah. Who, 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 is it Kimberly Elise? It is Kimberly Elise. But yes. who would be her equal? And then Medea, Cicely Tyson. <laughs> you should. <Yeah. laughs> it is not Cicely Tyson. It is Medea. <laughs> but the only reason I point that out is because, like, as we continue, it's Wait, like what? this is a thing that is really, really sad to me. Because this movie made a bunch of money. You had TV at the height, at the point that like had people of color, not just blacks, but Fox had a lot of Latinos on TV as well. Yeah. Not a lot, but they had at least two TV mm-hmm. shows. And like mm-hmm. now we've regressed back to a time we're fighting to get back to that point. It's, yeah, it's very strange. I don't know what happened where it's the just, pendulum swung in the other direction and, and we, act, like people act like, oh, this is not a thing anymore. It just right. ended. We try to track that. It's so hard to track. There's like, because... Even in the LA Times article that was about this movie and how it's a phenomenon, and like people were like, "Oh, like it's so weird that this like we thought we knew there was an audience for this type of film, but we thought it was smaller than it was. Like it's this such a you know maybe more studios will do riskier films like this." And first of all, I was like, the language of the it, you, it was just like first of all, what? It's not a risky film. Yeah. It's a good movie. And then the other thing is like, yes, it may feel super special for black women who see this, but that doesn't mean only black women will enjoy this movie. Totally. Just like not only white, you know, potheads in the suburbs like uh, Harold and Kumar or like Seth Rogen films. You know what I mean? Like there are wide audiences for a a lot of different... Mm -hmm. Make a good movie, you make a good movie. Exactly. I was in a... This is a little bit of a... Yeah, it's a tangent. But I was in... For color girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough in college. Yeah. This play that was written by a choreo poem that was written by Inzaki Shange. And when it came out in the seventies, like the reviews were all like, This is a human experience. Like people would like get out of their seats and be screaming because uh it, they'd never see they wouldn't see anything like that before. Right. And it's all black women dancing like singing and 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 telling very personal stories that were these are black women experiences with but the audience is experiencing it, experiencing it as a human right. they're like mm-hmm. i relate to this i didn't go through what you went through but i know that emotion and i can feel that and and that's what i felt performing that too and afterwards we would like talk to the audience members in our costumes like they would come up and be like like old people young people like black white all, all kinds of races right. all they they were just like i felt so many emotions are like I love that and that's what made me want to keep performing because I was like I want to keep doing things that bring things out of people I mean, like where you leave the theater or or wherever feeling something mm-hmm. and I just love that it didn't matter like there's literally colored girls in the name of the of the production but other people can relate to it so I I'm glad when other things do that too like waiting yeah. to exhale or yeah. like yeah. yeah other shows can do that where it's like, yeah, this is specifically this group of people, mm-hmm. but it's for everyone. It's for everyone. And everyone can enjoy it. It's just, yeah. It's like, and the thing is, it should be that simple. It's like, you just make a good product and that should be it. Yeah. There's all these, like, for instance, uh, John, the article you let us read, you let me read, it literally says, these niche films. Yeah, niche Ugh. films. I'm like, these niche Ugh. films. They talk about, they talk about, in that, in that article, they talked about the Wayne Exhale. Way. The Preacher's Wife, which came out, made a good amount of money. But The Preacher's Wife? All right. Had, well, they were talking about it. Right. It hadn't come out yet. It hadn't come out. This but like, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. were talking about, they were basically, it was coded language for films with black leads. Yeah. yeah. That's literally all it was. It was just niche. like, niche, niche films are niche. films with black leads because they were like, they were like, The Preacher's Wife, which used to be, you know, was is a remake, and now it's a black lead. And like at the what was the oh, other one? Uh, Nutty Professor. Oh yeah, the Nutty Professor. What? Which now started... they, they had to come out yet. So it was like, oh, this one movie, Waiting Excel, did great. But we'll see how but black now movies we're going to see how these movies. We're going to see how these all these other movies Disgusting. black movies do. Disgusting. It was like I don't know. Maybe people when maybe, uh, yeah. Best Man Holiday came out a couple oh. of years ago. I remember <laughs> we talked like a lot about. Oh, this. I'm sure, oh probably <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing a title of some article that was like race film breaks box office yeah. records, and it was like race film. It was, it was film. USA Today. It was yes. USA Today. That was the way that they reviewed it. Yeah. yeah. And it was like the movie. <laughs> Because at first, and like we made it, we didn't even want to watch that movie because right. we we're like, oh, this is a black film. Should we do it? And we watched it. And it's like, this movie has nothing about race. It's just it's a family. black people in this movie. And they're yeah. just living their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry yeah, about yeah. that tangent. No, just, it's we just, It's like, no, we it's like we're watching this movie. It. it made a lot of money. And like you're saying, it's four black women. Yeah. How? 
Do you know how rare we see black women on TV and film now? Like leading a movie? Lead, right. Yeah. Leading a movie, though. No, yeah. It's Where they're not rare. a maid? Very, very rare. <laughs> but I keep saying maid because, like, what is it? Fuck. How many yeah, maids? No, yeah. Or a drug dealer uh, or a prostitute, a prostitute or a single mom just trying to get her Precious. life together. Yeah. Precious. She's um, precious. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, maybe we should just talk about things that we like. I mean, Whitney's Whitney's journey. It was like it was basically just like these men that were coming in her life that she was just like, man, I ain't dealing with this. And there was this one, this one dude played by Allstate. Uh, yes, John. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my yes. goodness. Yes, John. <laughs> don't don't. Yes, John. Celebrate that. Uh, and yes. He has a name. <laughs> he <laughs> has a name. <laughs> you know, we're talking who about his, what his mother? Name who his Trump. mother wanted uh, her mm. to be with, which was like, oh man, super complicated, right? So, um, and she was like, I don't know. He's coming into town. And yeah, that I heard was... like he's about to sign those divorce papers. Yeah, that sucked too. It's like your mom is encouraging this infidelity Infi- because he was a good man, and she kept saying like he's a good man. He's just in a bad situation. Oof. And but if he was a good man, he wouldn't be cheating on his wife. Yes, <laughs> yes, I a hundred percent. I was just like yeah. there was even like that moment where the scene with her, but with at the end where he's like he was like explaining why he just like, explains like oh yeah. My child, you know, had chicken pox and, you know, she just, I told the, I told my wife, like, she just need a hot bath mm-hmm. or uh, some, rub some alcohol on her. And it's like, oh, she doesn't get it, which is why I realized, like, I'm going to be with you and, you know, I love you. And, <laughs> and then literally, and, and Whitney's like, what? Whitney's like, Whitney's like, well, why, like, why are you here? Like, why, why with me? And she's like, he's like, oh, well, you're the most important person in my life. And I was like, you just talked about your kid, man. Yeah. yeah. Why are you yeah. going to go here? Sit here and say that she's the most important person yes. in your life. I was like, that's a terrible thing to say. Oh, You're a terrible person. Terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, so she's kind of dealing with him the whole time. And there's that one scene that she has with Layla, Leela, Layla, Leela, Layla. Man, I'm really Lila. bad. Leela. 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 We've been right. saying, we've been right. saying Leela. It's Leela. Leela. Let's keep it consistent, whatever. Leela. Yeah. Leela. With Leela's character where, where she was like, what do you think? Like, will this? Will he ever actually leave? You know, yeah. His wife and Lila was like, oh, and she basically tells her own story about mm-hmm. how, and we figure out that that's Russell, right? Or that, yeah, that's Leon's yeah. character. That she was with him. He was married. He kept saying that he would he would leave his wife. She moved, was pregnant. He was like, sorry, I can't do it right now. So she got an abortion. And wait, I missed all that. How did I miss it? It was like in two yeah. sentences. She like told a, a very short story yeah. to Whitney like at the carnival or something. Yeah. Oh, and Whitney yeah. was like, oh, what TV show did you hear that on? And she was like, I was never on Oprah. And you were like, oh. It's like, damn. Oh, snap. Man. Woo. Man. Yeah, which, Emotions. Is why, which is why at the end, she's like, I am pregnant <laughs> again, but this time I'm going to keep it. And yeah. I don't need you in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm going to read this baby book on my own. Yeah, I figure it out. Mm-hmm. But then even the Allstate guy, going back to him, that their last, their last interaction, <laughs> uh, right? Dennis <laughs> Haysburg. James, can you this stop being a respected <laughs> actor? Can you stop being this is a respected actor? James, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want, this is my problem. <laughs> I just, you, you're, you're derailing this whole podcast right now. Okay, I'm trying to tell you an example about the Allstate guy. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, uh, sure. I bet you when I say the Allstate guy, everybody at home is like, that's "Oh, what I'm that, I know who I'm talking Honestly, about." I it? say Dennis Haysburg, and everyone's confused. Yeah, they're the like, Allstate "Wait, who guy, is he talking about?" Okay? <laughs> I wouldn't even say President Palmer because everyone didn't see 24. Oh, so okay, anyway, nice. uh, well, President Palmer. So, the, the, so President Palmer. <laughs> see, you got me messing up. I'm six, the all stay guy and Whitney Houston, right? When they're at this, was it their dinner or like a restaurant? And then he, she finally like tells them off. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. Him, yeah. The thing that pissed me off in this one scene is like this. Good, this one the dude says like you're really important to me, blah blah blah. And then she's like, I'm done. And he's like, Why are you being like this? Why are you being so angry? And then he just stops, looks at her for a second. I'm sorry. And I'm like, What are you saying sorry for, bro? And then he literally gets mad at her for being mad at him that she's done with him. Well, she he, he says something like to the effect of like, okay, I understand. I'm not angry. I'm not angry at you. I, I forgive you. I forgive, I forgive you. Oh, yes, you. I forgive you for being you. angry. So like, now let's talk about this Oof. with you not being angry. Ugh. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, man. man. And the thing is, at that point in my mind, I was like, I wasn't even thinking of him as a black man. I was just thinking of him just as a man. And yeah. I'm like, bruh. 
You bruh, can't do you that. messed it up. <laughs> bro, you can't do this. <laughs> and then, because I've seen that in movies. Like, how many times do you see, like, the rom-coms and it's, like, the asshole boyfriend that the, the female lead needs to leave at some point? And mm-hmm. he does that move. It's like, yeah. you know what? You're angry right now. I forgive you, though. Ugh, Come ugh. back to bed, baby. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that's a universal thing. It's not just a black thing. That's just, like, a relationship As a thing. man, mm-hmm. messed up man Just thing. a messed up dude. Yeah. yeah. They, Leela has a similar experience where she, so she's dating this other dude, not Russell, Troy, who, like, <laughs> immediately when, like, she goes to this party and she, like, opens the door and there's all these, like, white people sitting in, like, these, like, white couches and like they have like a glass table, and immediately when they when she entered the room, I was like, "This is a cocaine party." Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and and, and t- t- Tessa was like, "Yeah, this is a cocaine party." <laughs> and we were both trying to figure out how we knew. Like immediately, like I've never been to a cocaine party, but I was like, "This is a cocaine party." It's all white. The Hollywood representation of a cocaine party. My man came in the door dancing with a leather vest, <laughs> and he was by himself. Just you ever just see that? So low. Just, just, just just low, so just low. dancing by himself, getting it. Bruh. Nobody else is dancing at this party. Yeah. Bruh, I was like, what? And it, I'm like, was the song playing or was he just singing it? I was so confused by everything that man was doing. Dancing hardcore. Um, and also, John, just so you know, um, his name is Bubba Gump. We gotta be consistent. What you that's what, that's what she was dating. She was dating Bubba Gump. Micheletti Williamson. <laughs> James. Micheletti? Okay. I, I, no, I James, can't. the man's name is Bubba Gump. Wait, so what is Bubba Gump from? No, he, he was Bubba Gump and Forrest Gump. Oh, was he really? He was Bubba Gump. Troy was? Troy, he was Bubba Gump. I, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Huh. Picture him with like, you know, with a little... But it was Bubba, Bubba Gump. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. But he... Uh, so yeah, she's basically dating this dude who's freaking a cocaine addict. Yes. And he like comes to her house... Two hours late to take her to his mom's barbecue. Very sweaty. Very so sweaty. sweaty. He's so high. Still no shirt on, though. No, no shirt. Still no shirt. Another vest. Just about and he's in like, this right, blazing go. sun. Let's go. She's like, I'm clearly not going with you. And he's like, Why you always gotta do? Why you always gotta do this? Oh, doesn't he's he like, have like a whole shaking. speech about like this is why we don't like black women? Or yeah, exactly. That? Yeah. He goes. Okay. Can we can we talk about All that? All right. We gotta talk about that because the thing is like, oh, I, okay. All right, so I, I, I try to compose them. Uh, yeah, I'm trying because in my head it's like I. This is again a generation Here above ours. Yeah. So it's like I definitely know there's that stigma of like black men leaving black women for like white uh, right. women. Mm-hmm. But the thing in my head that always fascinated me about that whole situation is that black women still seem to have hope and faith in black men, even though they did this thing. Whereas nowadays, at least in the comedy community that I know of, it's almost like at least as far as I've seen, the roles are reversed. Whereas like most black women I know. They white men aside from you and Tessa, you know, you gotta, black love. You know, you guys, <laughs> but it's just it's just fascinating to me because it's like he almost said that as a put down to just like black women. Period. It's like it you know was. what I don't need y'all because y'all not mm-hmm. whatever this thing Super. is. Yeah, and, and it's difficult to me to understand that as a man nowadays. It's like how do you put like you just dismissed just your race for that no still reason. happens. It still happens, mm-hmm. right? And I think I think I mean I'm sure you can. Uh, speak more to this but for me i feel like it's this idea that has been you know told to us by like a society right that had a slavery <laughs> at one point and like black men as they grew and got more power one of the things with one of and that's why um angela bassett kept calling her husband uncle tom was like this idea of like well i don't want to be a black man anymore because a black man is looked down upon in the society. And one of the ways for me to not be perceived as black is to have a white wife. And that Mm. is like, and so like he, Mm. so then they put down black women for all the things that, you know, the white, white society has put down black women for being too sassy, too loud, you know, you too opinionated. Yeah. They're trying to distance themselves from their culture, from their culture. And like, I mean, and, like they're moms like you yeah. represent my mom you represent my family you represent all the things that i grew up with if i distance myself from you i can be closer to the white man or like whatever the goal is you right. know like to to achieving more success in this world that this like society that was created by white men right mm-hmm. on the backs of black men yeah, yeah. i mean, I mean <laughs> that's the black men yeah. and black women yeah that's which is I'm why saying. and this is why you know this is why some of our audience gets a little bit it's a little uh, feels a certain way swirl. I do when swirl, we do the yeah. swirl, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah uh, Anyway. Yeah, I mean, because... It, 
And again, like this whole podcast has been a learning experience. I do this segment called The Swirl, where it's like you see a black male lead, and if it's a white one in a movie, he never hooks up with the white woman. It's like never even addressed unless it's about oh. race. Unless it's about his race. Unless it's about his race. So I started like putting this thing in the movie, and then I started getting uh, uh, Facebook messages, Twitter <laughs> messages about like how I'm holding back the race with this segment. Wow. And watching this movie, I kind of I get where that anger comes from. I mean, I got it before, but it's like right. I totally get where that anger comes from. It's like, oh, you you are putting white women on this pedestal. And I'm like, well, I'm not personally doing that. It's just saying that this is another form of like why black men aren't equal in these movies because you can have a movie with a white man and a black woman as his like love interest. You know what I'm saying? Like, Isn't that yeah. what the bodyguard is? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The, it, it, <laughs> but it, it, even it the happens. bodyguard, right? They're not... But it's not about her being it's black. Not about it's her not about her being black. But that's what also saying. like, it's not really about the relationship, but just sort of... The relationship is like secondary, right? right. I mean, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it in so well, long. No, so it, I'm it, just wrong. saying that it happens. We, I mean, what I meant to say was that it happens. It does happen in movies, and this thing of like the black man and the white and white woman sex scene is is a taboo in Hollywood, right? Even though. I never even thought about that. You I'm like trying to go through my brain. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen it gets taken out. We of talk about sometimes. it. The thing is that the thing, the reason that it's 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 not like apparent. It's not super apparent. We only realized it when we it was like, an accident. Yeah, when we, we did Beverly Hills Cop, and it was an accident. And then we like looked it up, and like apparently it's only happened in Focus, which just happened. in Oh, interesting. Yeah. It was yeah. the first time that an on-screen sex scene happened between a black man and a white woman, where wow. the film didn't center about their race. So like. Yeah, taking out like Jungle Fever, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, or like something. But and and usually when it ha- what happens like a lot of the movies is there's a black man and a white woman love interest, but they'll never actually have sex on screen. Sometimes kiss. they won't even kiss on screen. Like they'll just be together, just like guess who's coming to dinner? Yeah, they never. You never see them like make out or have sex or you, share you just know that they're together. Wow. And that's yeah, it's it's crazy. Yes, I like I already put that up is because I'm thinking about this movie and like this whole stigma of like leaving the community behind for uh, a white woman and hearing him put her down yeah, like it was that. Terrible. I was like, oh man, now I like And how you gonna put her down when you on cocaine? I know. Yeah, and you're late. He's like it's shaking, late. he's like I think, I'm sure that was also planned to have like the worst possible character okay. say that line. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to have like uh, Gregory Hines or like someone yeah. else be like upset and be like, oh, oh yeah, all you hard. black men, black women or whatever. But Ooh. like we have to have the piece of shit yeah, <laughs> say it because exactly. then we're like, then we don't care as much. It's like, right. oh, it's you're just a, talking nonsense, yeah. whatever. But right. really, that is a real, real thing that is thing. said yeah. often. Yeah. And it's crazy because like literally there's one good black man in this movie out of like the six they deal with and at no point do the women crap on black men like I mean like in a way of they're saying like black screw men all black men yeah. 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 yeah you know what I'm saying it's still that hope which I'm like it's so fascinating to me mm-hmm. can we uh, talk about the Whitney Houston Wesley Snipes scene <laughs> oh, Angela, no. Bassett. Angela Bassett Angela Bassett sorry Angela Bassett Wesley Snipes scene yes yeah um, cause that was I feel like out of a a movie with so many different complicated relationships that was the most complicated yeah. and I yeah. still kind of don't really understand like Set what that home. was saying so basically Angela Bassett just like she had her first like uh, court case with her husband she only got like $3,000 a month which isn't even uh, enough for the mortgage which is 5000 a month um, you know they're gonna appeal but she's just kind of like Ugh. Like, I can't believe he's doing this to me. And she's still kind of like, she's like, I ruined my whole life because for 11 years I was with this guy. He convinced me not to pursue my career, which happens to plenty of women. And, you know, their husbands will talk them into not pursuing their career to focus on the family. And then all of a sudden they're gone. And so it's like, I don't even have, you know, because the husband's like, oh, I built this business. It's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. You did it with me. Yeah. And then didn't give me any credit for it. And mm-hmm prevented me from also building my own business which i totally could have done right because she said she had a master's yeah and she actually put money into the business so she was shocked to find out that her name wasn't on any document terrible Mm -hmm. anyway so she's now she's sitting in like a very nice bar having a drink wesley snipes comes over give it up for the Darskin brothers (laughs) i'm not not trying sorry i'm not trying to make i'm sorry i'm not trying to make it like light skin versus dark skin but Wesley Snipes was the black dude that was like he holding was, it down. He was the dude. He was the dude, <laughs> and I remember being like, "My man." Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't That's even awful. billed in the in the movie. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then he, yeah, he comes in. He kind of says this cheesy line, and she just gives him this dagger look, and mm-hmm. he's like, <laughs> "Okay, no, 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 okay." <laughs> he's like, "All right, hold up, hold up, hold yeah. up." I, I know, I know what you're thinking about blah, blah, but like, 
uh, after this conversation, I'm going home to my wife. And when he said that line, I was like, how does that make what you said anything? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. oh, so that pickup line was just fine yeah. because you're going home to your wife. Yeah. That's Honesty, great. great. <laughs> but yeah, but then, but then somehow they have, they get into this open conversation where she explains that she's in a divorce mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And then he starts talking about like, yeah, my wife is actually dying of breast cancer. And you know, I, it's, it's weird. We had all these plans together and none of these things are going to happen. And so they kind of connect in that level. And I don't know. Did they explain when they... Because they didn't sleep with each other. They wound up spooning each other. Yeah. With, they, with clothes on. Because yeah, he, yeah. he says, like, I've never... Done. It's interesting because I think the point of what they thought they were going to do was have sex. Because he says, I've never done this before. And she walks him to her room. Right. And then she's like, how do you want this night to end? And he's like, what do you say? I wanted to be... In your arms or something? Or like... No, he said no. something... It was something vague. It was like... Mad, not magical, but like... like sweet? Uh, yeah, it was like something like... I Wait. wanted to be like... Remem- memorable? Memorable. Right. Something was like she that. the big spoon or was he the big spoon? I hope she was the big spoon. No, I don't know. She, I think maybe he was... He was the spoon. I think he was. He was, he pro- he was probably the big spoon. How would it have been if she was the big spoon? It would have been so bizarre. You it would have been bizarre, him, but it was so You would have been, like, been like, what's happening? Right <laughs> no, now? no, no. Because he's no. like going through something re- a lot and emotional. So is she, though. So no, is she, she, but how how cool would it be to show that she, she's stronger than he is? Because that was the whole thing. Was he also was like, just representative in general of the of black culture of the woman yeah, exactly. cradling about to, that's the thing you black see. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that is so true, many, too. There's that's so many great paintings. Metaphor. So many paintings where you'll see like a black woman standing and a man sitting and like him just like collapsed in her chest just like you know like I feel like that would have been dope yeah. matter of fact that even at one point she even hugs him in that yeah like she's is, like you know? standing and he's she's on the bed and he's sitting and that's like a famous like if you see any of those like Afrocentric like po- like not poses paintings there's always a thing of the black man sitting and like the woman like supporting and protecting him and I'm like oh they had that shot in this movie mm. yeah matter of fact now that we're talking about it it might have been done on purpose probably uh, it had to have been done on purpose yeah 100% yeah but, what, but that, that's what I that's like a thing that I um, understood more getting mm. older and watching it later just the idea of being able to connect with another person but not have it it doesn't need to go further than this like it's like you could know where the line is yeah it's like we had a strong connection and you are fulfilling something that I need at this moment but we're not I'm not gonna have sex with you we may not never talk again right but it's like in this moment I needed you and that that was great and I've like not that I've had many of those, but I've had moments where I'm like, "Wow, you're really providing something for me right now." And I neither of us can do anything about this, but like we don't have to. Like it doesn't have to be like a yeah. you're a long lost love or like we're, we'll be pen pals for life or whatever. It's like you know what? I just appreciate what you provided in my life right now. Right. And then yeah. they can move on from that. Yeah, that was like the letter that he wrote saying like, "You changed my life, and even though I may never see you again." And also like. What I felt for you didn't undercut the love that I have for my wife. It was interesting. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah. but it's like a weird. It's a it weird, is a weird. It's weird because you know it it's weird. like it's there's the whole like emotionally emotional cheating thing totally. of like it's like is that what's happening right now or right. is it just like it's not even emotionally cheating? It's just like this is something that I can't get anyway. So it's hard because his wife is dying and yeah. she yeah. needs. He's still a person who needs emotional support, and he can't get that from his wife. Because right. His wife, absolutely. His wife is the one. So, man, that is so that was tough. tough. That was tough. Tough situation. Um, yeah, and what I mean is, there but can any we other talk? But can we talk about legit her burning this cop real quick? Yes. Yes. Like yes, this, yes, yes. Yes. this is yes. an earlier yes. scene, but a great this one. A, I mean, because that was honestly that was like a that was like an Oscar moment. Her. Yo, yes. Yo, where is Angela Bass's Oscar? Good well, she don't have question. One. Great question. Wait, she's no, only been nominated for an Oscar one. one time. She was nominated for what's love? Uh, got to, what's love got to do with it? Only time she, she didn't win. win. But she no. didn't win it though. First of all, what do you mean you did? Halle Berry won the first. She's see, no. Halle Berry is the Halle only woman. The only she won the first. But that no, mean, Hattie. But that don't mean the bl- no, well, not for lead. You're right. You're right. Only one who's won a lead. Yeah, that's true. This wouldn't have been lead. We have like I think three of one supporting right uh hattie lupita, lupita and uh, jennifer Octavia. Octavia. oh no oh, sorry jennifer. four and, and jennifer. jennifer oh and and um monique yes and monique yes oh, yes, wow. yes that's right it's been like what's that seven five i mean six. considering 
what, 76 years? Yeah, so, uh, That's not that bad. Six out of 70. Hey, all right. Six yeah. out of 80. Go, uh, Six out of 88. Yeah, and then go, uh, one all right, well, one I, I guess I shouldn't have asked the question. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's upsetting. It's I mean, no, upsetting. I mean, Angela Bassett. It, so talented. I remember Angela so Bassett talented. was the actress to me. I remember my family oh, being like, she's going to be the first black woman to win one. Yeah, for sure. And the fact that she didn't win one. It, Especially it, like her turning this like she's it really says something i mean the shot the sh- i mean yo there's little moments you know what let's go in her acting experience like yes. there's, there's three moments in that whole sequence of her burning the car it's it's the the shot of her in uh the the closet closet and you see her look up and it's just something in her eyes where you just see like oh I'm. I know what I'm about to do. Yeah. Ooh, yes. And it, like she just, sees all of his clothes, just, like very just, neatly, nicely placed. She's and there's no and just, him being anal. She's yeah. doing like a theatrical monologue yeah. to herself, mm-hmm. like out loud. That like, apparently yeah. she improvised. <gasps> Did she? Yeah. Oh my! I could God. tell some of this movie was improvised, and I remember thinking this movie is very. This movie kept a lot of great improvis- improvisations because yeah. there was yeah. some like talk that they did with each other. Get wow, your I, that, shit. Get, get your yo, shit. shit. No. I mean, it's so good. Yo, the moment, the moment, the, when she sets the car on fire and walks away. Oh my god! I can't, is, I can't wait to get that mad. Yo. I cannot wait. Oh yeah, <laughs> to burn something. Why? No, wait, <laughs> don't. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> it's so funny because she took every single thing. Everything. She yes. put it, and she was like. She, she went yard. back and forth. She was like, mm, I'm going to take as much as I can, <laughs> put in this car, go back. Here, I'm going to do a little kid's car, wagon. A little Yo. kid's wagon. The, uh, put some stuff in, come the back. Fire, the, the, uh, and it's uh, nice that she moved the car back enough from the house. Yep, from the house. <laughs> yep. I know. I was like, damn, she don't care at all. She lit it right on fire. The fire, fire right in the front like, of her house. He's like, uh, ma'am, now, ma'am your, your car's on fire. It's no, like, she's like, ma'am, did you know your did car? You know your car's on fire? He's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but the uh, face she had. Man, you're not allowed to. to do, you know it's illegal like, to burn anything other than trash, trash in your front yard. It, it is trash. trash. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. And then, did you see oh, the guy? Oh, it is trash. <laughs> when, the, when the moment she opens the door, clearly the fireman knows. Well, yo, yeah. he's, like, yeah, he's already yeah. like he knew what happened. You had a like, hard he's day. Like, I'm not gonna <laughs> say anything. He's just no. Like, just please. Don't please you See, can't do he's like, don't worry, it won't ever happen. <laughs> I was like, oh so that's man. the only time I could tell the difference between if it was a white fireman and a black one. The white guy still tried to do his job. If that was a black dude who opened that door and saw her, he's like, never mind. Alright, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you won't smooth out the, smooth it. Right, she's got it, she's Wait, got it. Can we also talk about the scene where she just busts in his in her ex and slapped that yes. woman? Slaps his white woman. <laughs> slapped her across the face. Oh my god! Across Came in like a storm. Face. Opened the, the door. Like, Can me. I help you? She said, "Bam!" <laughs> Yo, and the thing is, the slap was so funny because she did a spin and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yo, she no. just slapped oh her god. Like didn't break a beat. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> just. That was a powerful smack, man. So that crazy. smack was so bad that if you look at the scenes, literally there's one extra who puts his head down. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he might thought that was real. And they all... Oh, oh, man. Can, I have, can I have the room to talk to my husband? Yep. Everyone walks out right. instantly. Yeah. All right, you got it. Angela. Yo, Angela Bassett better get an Oscar, man. She got it. She Angela get, Bassett did better she get... get a Tony oh, for... Yeah. She just did the she mountaintop? Was, oh, I don't know. They don't know. Oh, she was in the mountaintop. I don't know. She was insane. This movie it. came out around Christmas time too. It came out in November, uh, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah out, so the Oscar continued. It came out. Of, it was a yeah, but they they were not having it. Yeah. I mean, there was some melody. You know music or so something. Some of the soundtrack was a little bit. Uh, well, was shoot, Mary J. Blige. Shoot, shoot, get a <laughs> Mary J. Blige. I think one one for um. Oh, I'm not going to cry. I'm oh, not really? Going or like a nomination? She got, nom- she got nominees. Huh. Say it up. I mean, oh, that, I was the the thing. that was the thing is that they actually, they downplayed the success of this film a little bit because of the soundtrack. They said, I mean, well, the soundtrack was really good, so. I mean, the soundtrack had sitting up in my room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was on the soundtrack. I mean, I remember it in the movie, but was that maybe in the it was soundtrack? It, I, I remember this because I had. I it was in the movie. Uh, but I don't know. It was definitely in the movie. We had the soundtrack on cassette was. tape. I remember it. Cassette I used to love. I used Yo, to have a love of Brandy. Sixteen-year-old so Brandy deep. singing "Sitting Up in My Room" to For the this, Waiting XL. Yeah, this doesn't really soundtrack. Track. But do you remember it? Like the video is uh, Brandy. Yes, in I remember room. it. 
and she was. Oh, you know back. I remember it. I mean, do you remember the joke? You oh, the oh, oh, yeah. oh no, I mean, she had the pink wallpaper with the overalls, with, with the, the overalls, overalls. With the She's overalls. Just in her room. Yo, Brandy, oh, man. Yo, Brandy. Yo, bless. I love uh, her, man. Is there anything else for for? That we, she got that money though. She did. Oh yeah, she man, got that money. That, this was also a great. Um, uh, like screaming movie. Like I felt like multiple times in the movie, I'm just like, yes, <laughs> like yeah. I would like oh, scream yeah, yeah. and respond, like, yes, she got that money. <laughs> yes, she burned that shit. <laughs> yes, I'm just like, it was like, oh, I'm just yeah, so excited yeah. for everybody she in the movie. Yeah, but the it money was like, in the end. but it everybody. was different though. It was like she got the money, but it was also not saying she needed it, but it was like it was a respect moment that happened. Totally. Like she walks over, like she didn't even she did gloat a little bit right after, but like she didn't gloat. Walks over. They have this weird handshake, mm-hmm. and they kind of like nod. Then her and Whitney have this scream fest of like, yes. got the money, and they run out. I was like, yeah, right. man, good for you. Yeah. Get yeah. that money. Whitney yes. tells off all state, mm-hmm. and then... All right. I mean, come on. And, and then, Dennis Haysbert. Come on. Uh, Dennis. Leela tells off Rosso. And Leon. Then- Leon. Leon, yes. Have- yeah, Leon. Oh, I don't called- need you. Mm-hmm. I don't need you. I'm going to have my baby. And, and then, then how did Loretta get Loretta her? Loretta gets together with the. Uh, oh, she lets her son go to Spain, which yes. was the right thing to do. Yes. Like, you can't be holding your son back. She announced it in go. church. No. And yeah. she was like, and then she she has that great kind of speech at the end where she was like basically saying, like, well, he was, my son was the only man in my life, you know, and it was hard, like, kind of hard to let him go. And she was like, says something like, nobody's ever loved me or something, right? Well, because, because, that, because Gregory's like, I love you. And yeah. I was like, oh. mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting because when Gus just just get back to the race, got it. When Gus, All right. when Wonka. Gus comes in, okay. the dad, the dad finally arrives. Right? So, Carlo Esposito. Hey man, I'm talking. I'm talking about All Gus right, 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 right. bro. Okay, James. So when Gus finally comes, Gus tells her that um, you know he's homosexual, and it you could tell like she wanted to like she was hoping that him coming back was going to be their shot to like mm-hmm. to do it like her her chance at love again right. And it's interesting because this is another thing I feel like happens in the black community a lot when it comes to homosexuality. Like, also very progressive that they even put that in the movie. I thought yes. so. Because right? I was gonna say I was like, oh, it was because it's still messed up. By the way, I still like it's so it's so hard, especially specifically this this time period where like you know uh, gay rights are on the rise and people are getting more comfortable with with revealing that they are gay, but. They had there was all these men that were in committed relationships. The down low, yeah. the down low, yes. even with with yeah. children, and then they'd be like, "I'm gay," and then leave their families. And like, there's a part of you that's like, I understand it, but there's a, but then there's also like the very human part of like, that's messed up. Yeah, though. you can't you, you what family. you you're with built. the family. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, and then like pulling the rug under and like, yeah, you can still take the care thing of your I kids. Thought yeah. like, yeah. What I really liked about it in the, in this movie in particular is that they like they didn't like. Uh, they didn't beat around the bush with anything, or they didn't like. They didn't like play it up. Like, like Juan Carlo, like is like really serious. You know, he's like very much like dealing with the moment as opposed to like they have that other character in the movie. He's like, uh huh, uh-uh, uh-uh, you know. Yeah, you're right. But like, but he's like very put together and like very. I don't know. I thought that he was wanted cool. to see his son too. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, he was yeah. like, if he doesn't come by tomorrow at noon, I'm leaving. Like he wanted yeah. to see his kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I give him I mean, a, listen, a I, little bit of credit. I mean, I, I will say this: like I talk about all the time, like me and my dad ain't cool, but I enjoy the fact that like this dude admit admitted like he screwed over the family and was like, "I'm gonna wait to see my son." Like he was like, "I'm gonna wait." I like, I like tell him I'm here. He only came to the house to see the son, which is totally kind of the mom. But he didn't say. But he wasn't like, "I'll come over tomorrow." He was like, "Tell him he can come see me if he wants to." But I'm by noon. I'm gone. And he could have. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I he could have made it, it easier for this. Yeah, yeah he could have made it easier. I mean, he came to the house. I guess. I mean, unless he was gonna yeah. come back every day. But it's also still like after years of never I know. coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, man, that shit matters. Like, listen, I I said it like early in the shit. I was waiting to see if my dad was going to text message me on my birthday. Never got it. So, like, if you right. show up 30 years later, yeah, it, it kind of counts. It means something, yeah. It, it, does, it means something for sure. So, um, I'm like, at least he did that. But he also got a new dad, though. 
You know what I'm saying? Gregory Hines. Yeah. yeah. She's Gregory like, you're Hines. taking them I mean, fishing. Gregory Hines. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. You know? To get. <laughs> you're taking them fishing. Was that the you're point you them. wanted to make? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm or or you're going to talk about the scene where Don Faison was like, my dad. Well, well yeah, because like, the thing is like the... Because the, that was kind of harsh. To, yeah, yeah, he... Oof. I mean, because yeah, he literally started screaming <laughs> at his dad like, is... Oh, no. The, I, feel like I, I feel like I never feel comfortable saying that word, but he screams at his dad is, you know... Oh, my dad's whatever. queer. He kept saying that. He said the F word. He said the F word. No, he did say that first. Then he's like, it doesn't matter. This word, queer... Gay, homosexual, homo. Yeah, but I, but I, but the thing about that scene is like that's a reaction I feel like a lot of, especially men, black men have. But Loretta Devine still defended the the dad. It was like, yo, don't call him that, don't do this, blah blah. That's and, true. And that's the thing that she almost didn't have to do because she was hurt by this guy as well, mm-hmm. and he was, you know, you see what happened. Like I just love yeah. the fact that like she still defended him and still shows another thing about black women of like, no matter. I hate to say, no matter what you do, they will always defend you. They will yeah. always have your back. I mean, like, if they, I mean, if the love is there, then you know. Yeah, yeah. So, they're gonna, mm. and then they're gonna support you. And the only other scene that I wanted to talk about, unless anybody else has, was the one scene where they're just talking about. But it's so funny when we're talking about the, how this film doesn't pass the Bechdel test. This is the scene that came out of my mind so much was when they were just all four of them just talking about how terrible men are, like. When they're all drunk? Yeah, where they're yeah, all drunk. At the couch. And yeah. I was like, that is the one scene where they could have been talking about anything else and they're all still I talking. They literally like listed out like, isn't it funny how we all have issues with men? Yeah. They like say like, <laughs> explicitly, just yeah. like, you have this, you have this. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we know. We follow yeah. the whole movie. Like, and they're like, oh, what are we doing? Like, let's dance. And they dance. And then they're like sitting down drunk. And they're like, and then sometimes they got small dicks. Yeah. <laughs> and then they and then can't they got, fuck. And then they, like, they oh. can't. And then yeah. was it was it Angela Bassett she was going to call... The the uh, yeah. the new yeah. the new woman the white woman right. and they're like don't do it yeah I mean uh, yeah that, that was the chance to talk about anything, anything. anything. Their, their futures <laughs> that was the woman to talk about like you know your what? job yeah like you know what? I'm gonna open up another beauty salon I'm a <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. I'm a do something <laughs> gosh you know, I did and the, but I do like uh, that it end with like three of them being like whatever like cutting out the final men that were kind of hanging on le- leeching on their lives mm-hmm. and being like and in Whitney basically telling her mom like I'm not I, I'm not gonna be alone. like or I'm okay with being by myself mm-hmm. not having a man and my, I'm successful I have a great job I have great friends like I don't need a man to like make me complete because her mom basically was like yeah. are you breathing I into the it. mic am I <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have I don't have headphones up here. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that really bad? No, that was a hard one. Well, I apologize. Shashir is about to make a, 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 a really no great point. No, I'm you sorry, I, I apologize. I could I can't hear it because I don't have headphones. I couldn't tell that. Turning was, into like a church lady. I, I, like, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and oh, so that's right. <laughs> It, mm, there is one thing mm. I thought was very interesting is that uh, man, I don't even remember because I'm distracted by you. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> remember what you were going to say? Oh, we were just talking about uh, Whitney and her mom. Oh, 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 like um, maybe that being like a representation of uh, generations changing or right. times changing, mm, totally. like kind of a distancing from this old idea that like you have to find a man or you're not worth anything or like you, you if you want to be anything in society, you need to like get married or whatever no matter what the man's like and also like the mom's mentality was like no matter what he does he's good he's a good man at least he has a job and he has this and that doesn't matter if he's married or whatever right. and then Whitney distancing herself and being like no but I'm great on my own like mm. I don't need this to make me a person I'm my own person already I already mm. have all the things that I need I don't need to have I don't need to make allowances for this just because he is a man yeah. Which I think is great. Yeah, and she, they talk about her age too. Like her mom says, "You're 32 years old," which is like, great. "Oh my god!" Like, what? <laughs> so young. I was like, that, "Wait, that's the that's, that's the limit." Like, shoot. also like, she's so successful for 32. So yeah. successful, like a TV exec or yeah. something. So like, successful. She was like, she was doing her first show. She's like, "Yeah, I, I finally got my my show." As a like, black I'm, woman in the, yeah, 90s? in the 90s. My god! <laughs> I was like, "You're 32. You gotta no. get you." So <laughs> black black. People in the '90s actually had a nice TV boom. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that was more that's possible was, then. It was actually it was a little about. bit more possible then. <laughs> I mean, I mean. Anyway, I uh, mean, we ain't had that many sitcoms. Uh, all right, we got Blackish, you know. We got one. Uh, we got a couple. We got Carmichael. sitcoms. Oh, yeah, Carmichael. Carmichael. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Great show. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's time to wrap it up. Uh, there, there, it, there's a swirl in this movie. Did anyone peep it? There's a swirl. Wait, there's a swirl in this movie. It's Donald, the white, Donald, the white Donald Faison. Oh my God. Oh. Donald, Donald, 
Yeah. There's a swirl in this movie. So Donald Faison, like the like, there is a swirl in this movie. Loretta oh, Devine, like comes, she's coming to like wake him up or something like that. She opens the door. First off, my man is getting a blowjob mm-hmm. right by the door. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't <laughs> locked the door, bro. Why did you not lock the door? Bro, yeah. you ain't locked the door. At least lock the door. Like, like, You're at your mama's house. You ain't gonna lock. And they're not the even door. Like, the door's closed, and they're just like. In the open, he's like, in the open. Like, not like, even, open. not like, under the covers. Just like he's on the edge of the bed, she's on the floor. <laughs> like, but first off, first off, that's disrespectful to her. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> that's just, the first interaction she has with your mom is your penis in her mouth. Oh, goodness. And the thing is, you ain't even hide. He could at least. He's like, oh, he this door's hid somewhere. He like, could have like, Stand behind the door, or yeah. if you gonna be on the bed because you want to sit down. Go to the other side <laughs> of the bed. So at least that way, when your mom come in, you can turn around. I'm like, Ugh, and then she can drop down. <laughs> That's <laughs> also like definitely the only thing they did because she was fully clothed. Fully clothed. Yeah. She fully had her clothed. shoes on too. Was able to leave the whole premises with all her stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My man, and this is nothing Bray talked about at the beginning of this thing. You know he didn't serve her during that whole situation. Uh, uh, and he wasn't going uh-huh. to because she had her shoes on. Uh-huh. She had her shoes, uh-huh. underwear still on. To be mm-hmm. fair to him, I, I think it's one of those things where it was, it was the beginning of it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Were, no, 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 no. I think it was first, first, thing, first, first thing. No, no, no. no, 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 it's, no it's that different. was their if, foreplay? If they both would have been no, on the bed, kissing. that's they different. They could have been kissing and then, they and then she was like, and then she could have just went down by herself. She didn't take her shoes off? <laughs> no. She Wait, but now, off, now, now, now I actually question this. Is the first thing you would do is take your No, my, no, 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 hear me out. No, no, hear me out. Hear me out. If I'm going to someone's house and, I, and we, we're in the bed, I'm about to get, I'm going to take my shoe off at least. No. I'm going to get comfortable. No. My whole, whole no, girl's purse was that, right behind that, her. Maybe, maybe they were like, Wait, we've got to make sure we have all of our clothes on. But here's the thing. This doesn't track because... <laughs> I would be like, you got to make sure you have all your clothes on, so that in case my mom does come in. But we maybe they were thinking, maybe like they were thinking she would something. not. She did. How not. you ain't gonna lock the door? That's my only thing. Yeah, that's a huge problem. I think because he was what seventeen. They're still questions. in high school. Yeah. I think it was just a conversation at school where it's like, you want to come over and suck my dick? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> or she was like, I'll come over and suck your dick. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And then they go do that. Anyway, see, but, see, but this, this is my whole thing about that squirrel though. Even to this extent, okay, this is a movie with all black people, right? I find this funny because this ain't really a swirl. I just find the funny situation that the son it's not who really gets a swirl. That's definitely no, that's a oh, swirl. I'm sorry, not, not a swirl. Most swirl what, what I find interesting is that you have this movie like all 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 black people for the way for the most part. The 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 evil person, the two evil women in the movie, if you think about it, is the white woman who took Angela Bass's husband. Yeah, and then. It goes down to a younger point. It's like even our young black men mm-hmm. are like being tempted by these white women because I'ma sneak somebody in my mama's house. You gonna sneak somebody in my house? You to suck on your little pee pee? She said you're seventeen year old. Yeah, you're seventeen year old. Whatever. So like the I other evil person is the other white girl getting here. Also, and like it's unfortunate they... too that she had to be vilified in that way because it was really Donald Faison's fault. Yes. Like, she was just, you know what I mean? Maybe if it was a black that, girl, I'm sure Loretta would have talked to her. I'm pretty sure she would have given her. She yep. let that little girl run and was like, yeah. how dare you, my right. son? But if it was a black girl, she'd probably be like, what's wrong with you? Yep. Why are you doing this? Yeah, you know better exactly. than that. Where are your parents? Et cetera, et cetera. Yep. But she's like, I have no connection to you. You're a white girl. Get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, and the thing is, like, Donald son was wrong because, again, I feel like even if she said she was going to come over and just give him a head, he could have set it up nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he could have some music. No, hear me out, Bray. He's hear 17. me out, Bray. No, you, when you 17, okay, you get sneaky. You're crafty, all right? My man, right, didn't, have, my man didn't have no, no style. No, I, mean, I agree with that, but yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the setup part. There's no 17 year old setup with candles and nice music. Like, nah, you try. My stop. man could have. You could have. You're All not right. just buying like a 17 year old equivalent to that, though. Yeah. You, know you put, like, try yeah. Stop. He could have. Uh, bully clothes. <laughs> <laughs> My man ain't had a radio. Praying that no one shows up. <laughs> Forgetting to lock the door. <laughs> My man couldn't put on BET, have a 106 and Posse hit music at least. Part. Well, All it right. wouldn't have been that at that I time. I mean, it wouldn't right? have been that, but I'm yeah. All right. Yeah, real quick. I know we got other stuff we got to do, but y'all seen that movie, The Players Club? Oh, not a long time, I, but yeah. yeah Ice Cube yeah, one? That movie, yeah, the, it's Ice Cube. He wrote it. Don't you did? Are you no, comparing that to this? Lisa Ray is the lead in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's you great. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She was great in it. Hey, yo, Shisha, what James does, he does these terrible bits where he compares 
bad movies <laughs> okay. to movies that were watching. Why you gotta say bad? Lisa Ray was great. She was great. Thank you, Shashir. Was the movie? Is that what you was? Your question was Lisa Ray great? No, my the, question is just in general. How do we feel about the movie The Players Club? Um, I honestly can't remember that. There's well. strippers in it, Jane. Yes, we're talking about a movie. <laughs> we know. finally talked about a movie where it was like black women with jobs. <laughs> They weren't stripping. She is trying to get through college, sir. Oh my god, sir. That's true. She, yeah. That Thank fight you. scene was That's intense. True. Oh, she, she, do you remember the fight oh, scene yeah. in the oh, Players Club? Off. Yes, she goes off she, in that fight. Like, yes. broke that woman's face on a she sink. Did. Mm, 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 mm. That's not okay, necessarily so I'm putting just us. Saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe the movie, maybe the movie's okay. I'm okay. just saying, wow. maybe the Players Club's okay. I mean, Everybody, check it out. Rent it. It's on Amazon. Anyway. Uh, so now it's time for the cause. We rate films, not based on how much we like them, personally, but how much they help the cause of more leading black actors in Hollywood. So we give it either a black fist, which means it fully helped the cause, mm-hmm. a white palm, meaning it was so-so, or nothing, meaning it didn't help the cause. So that's, that's the thing. It's like, did this film help you know, make the case for more leading Black actors in Hollywood. In the count of three... I want to look up a fact real quick. Let me look up a fact. raise it up. Oh, okay. You're going to look up a fact? Yeah, because it's going to... Yeah, hold, hold, <laughs> hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, do we... Yeah, okay. You, are, yeah, you, are you ready? Uh, yes. You can go one, two, three, or three, two, one. I'm a, oh, gosh. It's a good question. You're going to go one, two, three. It's not three, a good question. Literally not. Immediately, not. immediately <laughs> when I begin counting, you will know... Shashir, sure, did you know you were going one, two, three, two, one? I mean, if he said three, I would have known that he was going three, two, one. And if he said one, I would have assumed. Wow. You know, you know sometimes when Thank you for like, laying you it out. You give me a look, it's like, just be on my side. I'm sorry. You also gave me a wink. I'm so sorry I didn't. Uh, I'm going to go three, two, one. Okay, Gerard? All right, thank you. All right, here we go. I'm going to close my eyes because I don't know what I'm going to do. Three. Oh, you know. Two. I know. I know what everybody doing. One. All right, four black Four black Four black, black fish. Fish. Well, here's the thing. I, the only reason that I would even hesitate is because, you know, man, some people try to paint this like it was like a a, a, a fluke. Like, mm-hmm. oh, an aberration, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Whitney Houston's in it. You don't have that kind of star power sometimes. Ugh. Angela Bassett's still working. Angela Bassett's still <laughs> so working. So is Lord of Divine. Lord of Divine, still Divine. working. The, here's the thing. These women are incredible. It is one of those things where, like, because Whitney Houston was famous before films, you know, I think I, Whitney Houston is great in this movie. Uh, you know, sh- she's a good actress. She was a good actress. Sorry. She was, um, she was. But she, but like it is, we talk about this sometimes how like Hollywood will only give leading roles or like will give leading roles to like famous musicians, especially when it comes to black people more often mm-hmm. because they have clout already. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. this idea of like, Oh, well, you know, so like pretty much any famous black person who, any famous black rapper or R&B singer who wants to be in a movie can and probably will get a really nice big role. Um, It happened recently. It happens constantly. I mean, (laughs) mean, like like we said, though, like like, she is great in this and was just good. Like she totally was. She's good. She held her ass. Totally. But. But this article was saying, like, well, Whitney Houston star power, you're not, you don't have too many people like that. And they kind of ignored the fact that Angela Bassett, first of all, was already nominated, right? Right. What yeah. Love's do was already nominated was for the Academy Award. Yeah. And then, and then not only that, she's an amazing actress, and right. so is Loretta Devine, mm-hmm. and so was uh, Leela. So, like, what do you, anyway. Yeah, yeah. so what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, what are you talking about? And there are, like, a lot, even though they weren't the stars, there were a lot of supporting black actor, male actors in Who are great. Who were great. Yeah. Um, but... That was the only reason for a pause of hesitation, but I can't do that, man. There's four black... I mean, I feel like this hasn't happened since. Yeah. It, it has not. But it at, least, has not. at least... It, set it off? It showed... At least it was showed. It proved... Was, I think Set It Off was after. It was after. Yeah, 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 right. Right. Oh, was set it off after? We got yeah. Set off. Was after. Okay, okay. That was great. Uh, but at least it after. proved like it, it, that, it, one, it could be financially successful. That, two, it's not... Je- like, it could have a mixture of audiences, because I think I was reading, like, there were white women coming to see these films too like it was a, a nice mixture it made 14 million dollars internationally which you know they try to say black films can't do well internationally um and it only cost like 14 16 million yeah, make, only so. 16 um and then also it was just really good even though critics were like so so about it people loved it and and then how stella got a group back came after this mm-hmm. too and then like a lot of those other films a lot of things were getting greenlit at the time it was kind of in this nice little boom of like Hey, maybe we can't put black people in leads. And I, 
who, who knows what happened? Maybe like one movie did bad, and they're like, oh, never mind, we can't do it. That's exactly what. That's happened. literally what happened. It's like <laughs> one movie did didn't do well, and they were like, oh, see, that's the real. That's the stat. reason. Yeah. And the good ones are the aberration, for whatever reason. Disgusting. Anyway, what do you? Well, yeah. You want to go? You want? Why did you? Why did you get the movie of Black Fist? Oh, because I, I feel like it did a great job of creating full characters. Totally. And that is a thing that we don't see a lot for black female actresses. And yeah, I just I don't know, it just gives me hope that we could we could get there again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could do it yeah. again. And it inspired you. It definitely inspired right? me. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean all of those performances like I was like, oh, this is how you, this is how you act. Yeah, this is- I mean, and like that on it on its own is like enough, right? Like Huge. the simple fact that like it's like there's this movie, and then now it's like it ins- inspires you to do what you do. It's like great, mm-hmm. yeah. great, yeah. And in any like meeting I'm ever in, or like like when someone's like, what what do you want out of the film? I'm like full characters. I I just want to play a full character. I don't want to exist to to service some man's story or like to service i don't know i don't want to be the best friend where i'm like helping somebody Mm -hmm. else out and being like a magical negro and just being like well here's some advice (laughs) oh man oh that is what we were were talking about yeah Uh, mr church trailer and oh my god and the other (laughs) what was the other trailer i've uh, never been more conflicted in my life what was the digimon hansu is in Uh, the oh yeah yeah, the other one say it's something with say in it all i know is they both in here man being digimon hansu is it they both being magical. Yeah. There's I a, mean, yeah, there's a, his character in Amistad, though, that's fine. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll say why well, I gave it a fist because, kind of what you guys said, and it's, again, to me, this movie, the fact that I was looking up is that this movie came out in 95. After this movie, we had Living Single, which came out in 97. Yes. Oh. Girlfriends that came out after that. And like I know those were movies, but those were TV shows, and it were like just black women leading stuff. Yeah, and it was like they all looked different. Like I, I just remember everyone looking different. You had set it off, which was like I mean, that was one of the first times I ever saw and set it off. Um, Queen Latifah played a lesbian, but like, but it wasn't about her being a lesbian. She was, just tough yeah. as everyone she was tough. Yeah, exactly. She was <laughs> tough as hell. She was yeah. tough as hell in that movie, and it's like that probably never would have happened if this movie wasn't successful. Totally. Yeah, and even. To me, Angela Bassett is so funny. I think Angela Bassett is one of the greatest actresses of all time. Yeah. Like, period. If you ever see her Hands on American down. Horror Story, right yes. now, she's oh, she killing, is killing, killing, killing it. Killing Killing And it's like, that happened because, I mean, she was great before then, but like this movie put her into that, oh, white people know who you are. You know what I'm saying? So it got, Which is it got her a little... Was it this movie? Because um, it was because this one did do well. Because I remember reading this, this article. This one did better than... What love, what love? Yeah, yeah. What love got? It didn't make that much money. It was just like right. it was like. Just I think people. it was. I think you're right. I think it was this. Movie. It was. This was the biggest one budget wise. But I also I just remember this movie again. Maybe I have all my childhood on it. But like how the women in my family reacted to it. It was a mm-hmm. big deal. It was a big deal when it came out in theaters. And it was an even bigger deal when it came out on VHS. And I remember when it came out on VHS, everyone had it. It was like it was the VHS everyone had. My mom had the cassette tape of the soundtrack. You know, and I remember like all of my like. Don't do this. Don't do that. As I was watching this movie, I'm like, oh, you guys were telling me don't do this because, like, this is what you don't think men should do. But also, these are some of the messed up things that men did in this movie, you know? It's super so, powerful, man. I, it was People great. really I, don't yeah. realize how powerful film is. Like, how much it shapes our culture. Uh-huh. How yeah. we think. How much it, it can help people relate and like speak to things that they couldn't articulate themselves mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. own personal lives. Film is And it wasn't powerful. a black thing. And I, I totally get that exactly. black and women. It was the black and black, white thing black that came up. But like, but, but what I'm saying is like, there's so many things in this movie that yes, it's, it's very focused and directed at black women, but there's certain things that I felt like as a man period, whether I was black or white, I would understand that this should not happen. Definitely. Yeah. Period. hundred percent. Yeah. That's okay. So, so check it. I, gave, voice, this do you movie, see what he I gave this movie a fist because of Whitney Houston, Angela Bassett. Why are you doing Layla Rashawn, <laughs> Loretta Devine, Gregory Hines. You're just reading the Dennis IMD. Hayes, yeah, you're just reading the IMD. Let me just read. Well, I call Esposito. Okay. Donald Faison, uh-huh. Leon, Wendell Pierce, Wesley motherfucking Snipes, okay? I gave this movie a fist because it's black as hell. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about Forrest Whitaker? Man? Hey, 
I wasn't done yet. Okay, so he, he was totally done. So, <laughs> it, it, it seemed like he was done. He was leaning back in his chair. Terry McMillan. All right. Okay. Boris Whitaker. Okay. What about the sound guys? Okay. Yeah, we know right. they, we know they're like. Who produced it? What else we got? Here? What else we got? Is that is that is that it? You got more? I gave it a fist because these beautiful mm. black peoples acting and directing and mm. writing and producing their asses off. Mm. Mm. And you know all these pe- you know all of these people. I'm saying. They Don't did. act like you didn't know all the For, people whose I thought, names I just said. Just we were now. not jumping on a slave song. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, no, I thought you yeah. didn't know who I said. He's doing spoken well, word I thought, now. Yeah, I thought he was going into like one of those spirituals. I, I, was trying to I thought he was going to be a per, yeah a preacher. I, I thought he was a preacher, but he got mad hood. I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying I gave it a fist because those beautiful people did beautiful jobs in this movie, mm-hmm. and they, for the most part, R.I.P. Whitney Houston. R.I.P. Gregory Hines. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the most part, they still doing their damn thing. I feel like he's a little tired because I'm tired watching him do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So. Great, great job. That thanks, was great. Thanks, thanks. A lot of energy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, I don't know a lot of energy this. for, I don't know what reason. I don't know. Like, no clue what just happened. Just to read. Basically, off your just phone? read the credits. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted people to feel it. You know Not what I'm again. saying? I wanted okay. them to like yeah. hear it on cool. the. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome to have you. And uh, SNL premieres. October first. October first. That's the first. Which show. I, 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 our, I think we're, our plan is to time it. It's next time time Saturday. It. So I think it's tomorrow. Oh wait, we think it's tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay, all right. The timing tomorrow. is tomorrow. It's, it's tomorrow. Like tomorrow. It comes out okay. tomorrow. Comes so out tomorrow. tomorrow. You gotta watch. Okay. Also, I don't know. Nothing's public yet, but I know a couple of people who got some, got some jobs. Wait, oh. what? Some writing jobs. Ooh, can, can you, you tell, tell me? What? I don't know. Can you say it's not public I, yet? No, it's can, not public yet. But you can say it right now. Right now? Maybe don't. Maybe no, I don't. <laughs> honestly, I'm so scared. I'm so scared of any yeah, don't, don't, do don't do it. Anyway, yeah, so don't I won't. Do it. But, uh, please talk to you watch. <laughs> and then, is there anything else you'd like to talk about, promote? Um, do you want people to follow you on the social media? Yeah, on my social media is uh, The Sheer Truth. T-H-E-S-H-E-E-R Truth. And I have a, if you're in New York, I have a live show that I do monthly called Sashir's and Made Party Time, usually nope. at Union, Union Hall in, in Park Slope, Brooklyn. And you can go to Sashir's and Made Party Time dot Tumblr dot com. <laughs> just Google it. Sashir's and Made Party Time. You'll, you'll find that site. <laughs> just Google that. <laughs> and, um, and that's it. And watch SNL. I mean, yeah, yeah, dope. yeah. All right. Uh, and we'll be back with our plugs later. Thank you so much for listening. Peace. Peace. All right, it's time for some plugs. Boop, plugs. plugs. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, you can follow us at Black Men Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, blackmanpodcast.com for some show dates and things like that. Uh, I know we have a show coming up October 10th. Uh, I forgot where that is. It's in Harlem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll talk, talk about it. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> it's on Columbus Day. Go ahead. Uh, at John Braylock for me. Uh, JohnBraylock.com for videos and stuff. Whatever. That's good. Guys, yeah. I think I'm about to take a break from social media. Yo. What? Why? I know, because people keep getting in trouble for things that they tweeted. And I, every time that happens, I'm always like, uh-oh. Yeah. What if I get in trouble for something that I've tweeted? And it drains your battery and makes your, makes your, um, your data go up. Like Anytime you like open like Instagram and Snapchat, I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm get not some more data. Out. So if you want to find me, send me a message of pigeon. To Headgum Studios. <laughs> Please don't do that. All right. So, Chiraz not plugging anything. What's up with letters, let's yo? Keep, let's keep this rolling. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can follow me. Um, you can just... just James Third Comedy. Third is 3RD. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Funny or Die, um, and other platforms. But I probably don't do those other ones as much. So, why did you... Producer Nick. But just, can you, people send letters here? I want some oh, goodness. It's go called jamesthaircomedy.com. I have all kinds of videos. I have a video out on, on Fusion about reverse tokenism right now. Take a look at that. Laugh Out Loud Com- Columbus Day Edition is what the, what the show is. All right. Google that. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. If you live in New York, 
And it's on Columbus Day. What you got to do? You got a day off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. All right, baby. Uh, ne- Whoa, hold on. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. <laughs> Next week, we're reviewing the film. <laughs> I got excited. Uh, guys, next week, we're reviewing the film The Magnificent Seven, starring Denzel Washington, Dan, 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 directed by Antoine Fuqua, Washington. Chris Pratt, Vincent D'Onofrio, Ethan Hawke, Byung Hug Lee. Denzel right. Washington. So go Martin, watch that Martin, if you haven't seen Martin. it. Uh, and uh, we'll be back to review it uh, in the same length that it takes to watch the film. All right. <laughs> Did you mention Denzel's in it? Yes. We'll Denzel see, Washington. See you next week. Bye. Peace. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>